Hi everybody, Ashley with South Down Yoga. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're gonna get down on the floor. And if hearing those words makes you think, that's not happening, I'm not gonna do that. Stick with me for just a minute. So um, I'm hoping to get people on the floor to help stretch out tired backs. And um, if you are intimidated by getting down on the floor, I promise I'm gonna help you. But just so you all know today, you should have a chair that you can move easily from being on the floor if you feel like you're going to need it to get up and down. So if you've been using maybe a heavier dining room chair, maybe get something more lightweight. We're not sitting in it today, but you are gonna need it to help you get up and down. Also, depending on your spine health and your relative flexibility, you might want some kind of pillow during part of our practice today, so have one of those at the ready. You're gonna need your yoga block or whatever replacement you've been using, maybe some books or something else. You'll also need um, your yoga strap if you have one. If not, again, you can use a dish towel, but maybe one of your bigger ones. We are gonna be wrapping it around the bottom of our foot with a straight leg. So it's gotta be uh, long enough to be able to make that reach. And then finally, if you want a little extra padding or you haven't vacuumed in a while, you might want something to lay down on. You could have a yoga mat. It could also just be a towel. We're not doing any standing on it, so you won't need any of the grip. Um, so that being said, if getting up and down off the floor is easy for you, you can go ahead and fast forward until you see me on the floor. And if you're someone who might need a little help getting up and down, I'm gonna show you what to do. So I am very aware that if you have any sort of joint pain or uh, stiffness that it can be hard to get down and up from the floor. So I'm gonna give you some tips about that right now. So if you have your chair ready to go, you gotta use it. There's no need to get on the floor, in the middle of the floor with no help. Definitely use the help if you have it. So I would recommend putting a lot of weight on the chair. If you have discomfort in your wrists doing this, you can go all the way down to your forearms. And then from here, with much most of your body weight on your arms, you can go ahead and bend one knee and keep this toe tucked, okay? And then from there, if you need to make any adjustments, you can because you've still got a lot of weight in your arms. And then you can put your other knee down and then untuck your toes and just go right over to your hip. And then from there, it's easy to move. You don't have to look good doing it. You can scoot, <laughs> right? You can kind of crab walk, whatever you need to do, it doesn't have to look great. And now the thing that I think most people find intimidating is the getting back up. So again, you're gonna wanna come to your chair and put a lot of weight on it, okay? So get those arms on there, be in your side sit here so the weight is mostly on your hips, grab onto that chair and lift yourself up. And now you're on your knees, but again, most of the weight of your torso is on the chair and being supported by your arms. Now you have to make the choice, which one of your legs is the strongest? That's the one you're gonna bend up and plant the foot. You want that to be your front leg. And now from here, you'll notice that my back foot is flat. If you try to stand from here, it is a lot of effort on a flat foot. If you tuck that back toe, it's not as hard. So lean into this chair and then stand up. And again, this doesn't have to look cute. And then you can press yourself up use the back of the chair. If that was a lot of effort, you can go right to sitting and take a break. And there you go. That's how you can get up and down off the floor. So now it's time to actually get on the floor and do some stretches. So do whatever you need to do to get your space set up, maybe lay something on the ground, get your props, and then we will take this down to the floor. All right, so here we are on the floor. I hope everyone got here safely. Um, quick tip, if getting up and down off the floor maybe feels like it's gonna be hard on your knees, you can always put a pillow under your knees on the floor when you're getting up and down. So now we're gonna go down to our backs. So again, everything we do on the floor doesn't have to look pretty when you're getting somewhere. So I would recommend getting your hips in front of you, or your knees in front of you toward the chair so you can lean down onto your elbow and onto your back. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our lower legs onto the chair and have your knees at a 90 degree angle. So now, depending on the curvature of your spine, this may not be comfortable. And so you might want to prop your neck up a little bit and you can do that with two different things. You can do it with a pillow so that your neck is not uncomfortable. And if you need a little more, 
You could in fact do it with a block, but for a lot of people that might be too high. But just know those are things that you can do. All right, so once you're here, we're just gonna relax for a little bit. And if you've been sitting for a long time, potentially hunched over a computer, you might feel your spine starting to curve in a way that you don't like. And when that starts to happen, the muscles can be pretty uncomfortable. So you can just sit here, it's nice and relaxed. And just take some deep breaths and start to relax into the straightening and flattening of your spine. And then one thing you can also do, I want you to look here at where my pelvis is, where my hips are. You can tilt your hips up, your pelvis up, and then down, just nice and slow. And that's just gonna move your spine around and stretch out some of those muscles that might be getting pretty tight. And one of the things I wanted to mention is that any of these things we do today can be done individually. If you do one thing today that feels really spectacular in your body, just do it a couple times a day. It doesn't have to be a full routine. Just remember what you liked. All right, and now comes the reason we needed a chair that was easy to maneuver. You're gonna to wanna to be able to get it back if you're gonna need it to help you get up, but right now it needs to get out of the way. So you can just kind of shove it away to legs length or you could still catch it with a foot to bring it back. All right, and then from here, I want you just to place your feet on the ground, and then we're gonna extend our hands toward our knees and bring your knees to your hands and hold on to your kneecaps. And then with really straight arms, you take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, pull your knees toward your chest. And you inhale, straighten those arms, and as you exhale, pull your knees to your chest. Inhale, straighten your arms. And exhale, pull your knees to your chest. So again, this is one of those exercises that if this feels really good to you, do it for a long time. For the sake of not boring everybody, we're not gonna do it too much today. Okay. And then this time, you can just go ahead and take your feet back to the floor. All right, from here, just leave your legs where they are and we're gonna check in with your shoulders. So I want everyone to take your arms out so they're going straight out from your shoulders with your hands up. And then you're just gonna let your hands fall back toward the ground. Now everyone's shoulders and spinal health are different. So for some people, getting to this touchdown position is no problem and feels great. I have a shoulder injury on my right side, so it's not great for me to have my hand all the way down to the ground. So I put this block here, and I'm just gonna let that arm rest where it is. If you feel very comfortable in this touchdown position, oh boy, uh-oh everybody, <laughs> pause in the game, go out of here. Oh, the dogs really like it when I'm on the floor, at any rate. If you're here and this feels very comfortable for you, I want you to start taking your arms and sliding them up overhead and back down. So again, I'm not moving my right because it's not comfortable for my shoulder. But if this does feel okay for your shoulders, go ahead and give this a shot because it can really help stretch things out. And then if you find yourself really liking the way it feels to have those arms up overhead, go for it. That might feel pretty nice. So just something else to try. Oh, dog number two. I would love my assistant to get the dog out of here, please. Thank you, Madame Les Assistantes. All right, so from here we're gonna do a twist, you guys. So you're gonna take your knees and just drop them to one side. So I'm gonna go to the left, and I'm just gonna start to drop those knees down. The key is your opposite shoulder, your right shoulder, needs to stay on the floor. We don't want it to lift up. So you're gonna have your arms wherever they're comfortable and start to let those legs drop to the side. And then, once you find a comfortable spot, you can turn your head to the right opposite of your legs. Now, if your legs don't twist very far toward the ground, you can always take a block or a pillow to support them underneath and get whatever depth of twist works for you. And then once you settle in, you just wanna take some nice deep breaths. Check in, be sure you've got a nice relaxed jaw and a relaxed forehead. 
It's a nice time to close your eyes. And again, you're welcome to experiment with where your arms go for whatever is comfortable for you. And again, you're welcome to hold these twists as long as you'd like, but for now, we'll move on. So my recommendation when coming out of twists is always to do so very slowly and carefully since they're a pretty deep pose. You can make some adjustments, maybe pause here for a minute, and then take those legs over to the other side. So we're going to the right, and my sides twist differently. This side doesn't feel quite as um, tight, so my legs go a little further toward the ground. And then again, you wanna turn your head the opposite direction, so toward that left shoulder, and breathe. As you exhale, maybe your legs are able to drop a little further to the side. During twists, you might find that you need a little extra pressure to enhance the twist, and you can place an arm, or a hand rather, on that knee to add just a little extra to the twist. And again, hold that as long as you'd like, and when you're ready to come out of it, you can inhale, slowly lift those legs up, and then settle in for a moment. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is just grab one leg at a time. So go ahead, interlace your fingers over that left knee and extend the right leg. For me, it is easy to straighten this leg, but if you find yourself having a bent leg or it's really uncomfortable on your back, make whatever adjustments you need to. However, if you're able to have a straight leg, what you're gonna get is the benefit of stretching out your hip flexor. And if you've been sitting a lot, it's gonna be tight and you're gonna need it. So for here, we're just gonna pull this knee toward your chest for that first stretch, and then you can inhale, straighten the arms, move the leg, and then exhale, bring it toward your chest again. And exhale. One more time. And then keep that knee toward your chest, Try taking it side to side a little bit. So out towards your armpit, maybe a little bit across your midline. Nice, slow, easy movements. And you can just continue with nice deep breaths. And if you find yourself thinking, oh my gosh, it feels so great to have my leg out to the side or across the center, stop wherever it feels great and hold that and breathe into it. Maybe circle out your ankle a little bit. switch. So you'll take that leg duck down to the floor, bring the right knee up, and now we're here. And again, if you find that it's hard to straighten this leg, you can always put a pillow under a foot or keep it bent. We're going to inhale with our arms straight and exhale as you bring your knee to your chest. Do that a few times. Always inhaling as you extend those arms and then exhale, squeeze the air out of your lungs. A few more times. One more, and then we'll go ahead, exhale, bring that knee to the chest, hold it there, and then you can take it side to side. Again, this is one of those exercises you can do anytime during the day if this one feels particularly great for you. And then we'll be done with that. We're gonna switch legs one more time and I'm gonna show you another twist. Some people love this version of a twist, some people don't. But go ahead, put your hands on that left knee again and then take the toe of your left foot to your right knee and then go ahead and break that twist. You might need to do some adjustments with your hip you're gonna take that twist over as far as you can. Just like the last one, you don't want the shoulder to come off the floor. You want it to stay on the floor. So your twist might not be that big and that's okay. And then you're gonna go ahead and turn your head away from your twist. And breathe. I always find that when I'm doing floor things and some twists and some stretches, I close my eyes a lot. 
So whenever we're holding a pose, it's a great time to just close your eyes and relax your jaw and breathe. And then again, when we come out of a twist, we do so nice and slowly. Make a little adjustments with your hips. Then you can go ahead, straighten that left leg, bring the right leg in. Maybe give it a quick hug and then take the toe right to the knee and twist it across your body, making sure that right shoulder stays on the ground. And then you're going to look over to the right. And you might need to make various adjustments, moving the positioning of your hips, the positioning of your toe. There's no exact right way to do this. Just do whatever feels good. And then you breathe. Welcome to hold that as long as you'd like, but for now we'll come out of it nice and slowly. Bring both those feet up. Go ahead, just rock your knees side to side a little bit. Twists can be pretty intense, so go ahead and just take a minute to relax out of that. All right, so I said we were doing things to help your back from what you've been sitting all the time, and now we're about to lift a leg, and you might think to yourselves, that's not about my back but it is because it's about your hamstrings and tight hamstrings can lead to a tighter back. So now you're gonna need your strap or your dish towel and you are going to get it, however you need to do so, it doesn't have to be super graceful, right onto the ball of your foot and then go ahead and straighten that leg and then create some tension on the strap between your hands and your foot. And if doing this, you feel a good stretch in your hamstring, maybe you can't even get your leg all the way straight, but you're feeling a stretch, then you've found your pose for now. If you can straighten your leg no problem, go ahead and extend that lower leg and see how that works. And then if you have more flexibility in your hamstrings, you can start to slowly walk your hands up the strap. I have found my stretch. So for those of you who always assumed that yoga was all about being incredibly flexible, I'm here to show you right now, that's not the case. I have an injury on this side and this is about as far as I can stretch for now, but I'm feeling a stretch that works for me. If you're doing this and you think, gosh, I need to stretch further, and you really start to pull it and your leg starts to shake, you've gone too far. When stretching, if you feel shaking, it's your body giving you a signal that you're overstretched and you need to back off. So here we're just going to hang out and if it makes it feel better for you to maybe do a little bending and straightening to try to get into the stretch, you can do that. You can also lower your leg and pull it back slowly a few times, creating more of a dynamic movement before holding in a static movement, whatever feels right to you. And because hamstring stretches can be intense, you might find yourself clenching your jaw or throwing your brow. Go ahead and stop doing that. And then I'm going to offer two other things here that some people might find um, really uncomfortable, and so you can skip them. Um, but some people might really like it. So go ahead, take both sides of the strap in your left hand, and then let's, and then you can take the tail in your right for some extra support, and you can try taking that leg out to the side. Now this, for me, get that elbow down, doesn't hurt my injury. And this has always been where I have been flexible. So my leg goes way far down here. Yours does not have to do this. And if you hate the idea of this stretch, then don't do it. But certainly your leg could be here, wherever it goes for you. But because this is one that I can do and it doesn't hurt, I like it. So you get to make whatever choice works for you. And the work is being done by your hands. Your leg is passive at this point. So your hands are holding that strap and they're in control right now. So you can hold that as long as you'd like. The other option here is to take the strap in your right hand with the left hand anchoring the tail and take it just a little bit across the midline. So what you're getting here is a stretch on the outside of that leg, maybe an IT band. Some people like to make this a twist as well and take the leg way over to the side. It's very intense, but that is an option if that's something that feels good to you. Or you can keep your back nice and flat and just take it a little bit across the midline. During all of this, you're just breathing while I'm getting all these tips. So again, hold those as long as you'd like. 
and then we're going to go ahead and lower that foot so we can switch. I like to just slowly let the strap roll through my hands here. I guess it's sliding, not rolling, so nothing too fast happens. We unhook the strap, bend both those knees. Left knee is bent. Now that right leg is going to come up, and you're going to hook that strap or that dish towel on the ball of your foot and extend. And again, if having this knee bent and this leg straight is where you feel a stretch, maybe this leg is bent a little bit, you start here. And if this works, you stay here. If you need to continue finding a deeper stretch, get this leg straight, extend that lower leg, and see how that feels. And if you can get even more stretch safely, then you walk your hands up the strap. And I, believe it or not, have had an injury on this side as well, but it's recovered better. So here I am with a little bit more flexibility on this side, but I will be honest and say that hamstring flexibility has never been my thing. So here we are. And again, if it feels good to kind of bend and straighten slowly, always slowly, to kind of ease into the stretch or to put the leg further up and then pull it further down. You're free to experiment and find out what's gonna work best for you. If your fingers get tired, you can give your hands a shake. If they get tired of holding onto the strap. And then we can try taking that strap out to the sides. Remember now the strap is in your right hand, the tail of the strap for extra support in the left, and you can take it out to the side. And if you really hated it on the other side, you might try it on this side and maybe it's better, or you might hate it on this side too. So just give it a shot, and if you don't like it, skip it. And breathe. that as long as you'd like and then when you bring it up really use that arm strength to come on up and you can try taking it across so now the strap is in the left hand and you can take it just a little bit across the body and I feel a pretty good stretch there or if you want to try rolling on the hips and taking it further across you're welcome to do that too um, give it a try but it's pretty intense and might find that an unpleasant experience, so do whatever works. Holding as long as you'd like. And I started to feel just a little bit of shaking there, so I backed off my stretch because my body was telling me that I'd gone too far. So bring that leg back up to vertical. And then a nice slow slip through the hands. You can bend that lower leg if you need for support. And down it goes. And we are almost done but I want you to go ahead and put your hands on your knees again. I want you to interlace your fingers. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Just pull those knees and then hold them there. Point and flex your toes a few times. extend the legs back down to the floor. Now I'm going to do a, a, a supine pigeon. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. Um, so I've done a seated pigeon and you can do a traditional pigeon on the floor but you can also do a supine pigeon. So the way that's going to work is you're going to keep this right leg bent with the foot planted firmly on the floor. Then take your left ankle and cross it over that knee. Gentle flex in your foot and a high ankle cross. You don't want to have any sort of collapsing ankle like this. It's not great for the joint. So a nice high ankle cross, gentle flex in the foot. And our goal is to stretch your outer hip. So if you're someone that is in this position and you think, great, I'm already stretching, then that's good. Now, I also want you to try to reach down to your leg and grab behind your thigh and releasing your fingers and pull that leg up to get a stretch. If you try that and you can't do it, you can take whatever you're using for a block and put it under the right foot. And then maybe that's your stretch. You can always press this knee out just a little bit and that might be your stretch. So there's lots of options. But I like to really get these hips stretching so I reach both hands through here and I make some adjustments so that I feel nice and comfortable and then I just breathe. I sometimes also have just one hand hooked here and take this hand and 
push that knee away from you a little bit. Keeping a flex in this foot, nice strong ankle. And then you just breathe. Based on how this feels in my body right now, I should probably be doing this multiple times a day. Maybe you want to circle out that right ankle a little bit while it's just out there. Holding this one as long as you'd like. When you're ready to be done, slowly take the foot back down to the ground. And unhook. Little side to side before we switch to the other side. And again, I'll show you all of your options. So the right leg comes up, gentle flex in the foot, high ankle cross, and maybe right here you already feel a stretch. Maybe you think you can get a little bit more, so you place that block under your left foot. Maybe that's enough and you're feeling a stretch in your outer hip. But if you need more, you reach those hands right through. And they interlace behind your leg. Flex in this foot. Oh. The dogs have seen a potential intruder, I suppose. And again, I like to take my right hand on my knee, press it away from me a little bit, maybe circle out this ankle. Just breathe. I would say generally holding a stretch like this, you should do five deep breaths at a minimum, maybe up to eight or nine. And then once you've done that, go ahead and put that foot back on the floor. And double check if you have some stuff down here. You're going to want it out of your way for right now. And our final thing, I want you to reach for those knees again. And I want you to grab your hands hooked, or maybe you can hug, whatever you can do. And I want you to take a big deep breath in. On the exhale, bring your forehead to your knees. Breathe here in a nice tight ball. Squeeze it as tight as you possibly can. If your ball isn't as tight as mine, that's okay. And then we're going to take another breath in. And on the exhale, let it go. Right, nice and flat. And then if you feel okay about taking your arms overhead, you can. If that doesn't feel comfortable for you, I think I'll just do a one arm today. And you can have your arms down by your side out to the side if that's more comfortable. But on an inhale, I want you to stretch from your toes to your fingertips and get as long as you possibly can. And on the exhale, relax. Do that two more times. Inhale, reach and get long. And exhale, relax. One more time. Inhale, as long as you possibly can, stretch. Let's take two breaths in here. Inhale. And exhale. One more. And exhale. Now, if you're not going to need your chair to stand up, you can roll over onto either side and find your way into the fetal position. If you are going to need that chair to help you get off the floor, go ahead and grab it with your feet and bring it in close. And once you feel like it's in a good position, go ahead, slowly roll over onto your side and pause here for a moment. Hopefully your back feels better than it did when this all started. And you're going to go ahead and get yourself up. You can put a lot of weight on your forearms and then slowly take yourself up. And if it's easy for you to stand, go for it. Those of you who might need a reminder, you're gonna to wanna to get your feet over to one side and start to take your hands and your forearms onto the chair in front of you. Remember, if you think this is gonna hurt your knees, feel free to slip a pillow under there if you need it. And then use the weight of your, the strength of your arms to get the weight of your torso up. And then this is where it's important to choose your strong leg. So whichever is your strong leg, that's the one you're gonna bend up. And then that back toe, you need to tuck it under. A lot of weight on these forearms. 
and then go ahead, press up, and listen to my dog being a siren in the background. And if that's a lot of effort, you can stop right there and sit, or you can come all the way up to standing. Either place, let's take a big breath in, arms up and overhead, and exhale, hands to heart center. One more time, inhale, arms up, and exhale, hands to heart center. Thank you for joining me on the floor today. Namaste.